I have a Grizzly G0761 milling machine. That's the RF45 clone from Grizzly. And I have two problems with it. The first is this screw right here hits the y-axis when it gets to a certain point. It's only free until a certain point and then it starts hitting. Another problem is this black box here which has the micro switches to shut off the power feed. It's got a power feed that moves the x-axis left and right. Um, that box, you can see there's, well maybe you can't see, but there's a little white line at the bottom here because it hits the hand wheel. When it gets to a certain point, it stops against the hand wheel even though there's probably a good inch and a half, two inches more of travel on this y-axis. The cutter is not even to the the <clears throat> rearmost uh, T-slot in the table. This is an adjustable bracket, but right now it's at maximum height, so it'll only go down further, which is a problem. I could cut the bottom out of this bracket so that it would go just a little bit higher, but I really don't know if that would give me the height that I need. Behind this, there's another big plate mounted against the, uh, whatever that is, the Y-axis. <clears throat> I could take this plate and flip it over. The only problem with that is that there's a pointer here on the other side that points to this printed scale, which I never use, but still, I don't know, just seems like a shame to get rid of the fancy pointer. So I might be able to flip that over and bring these screws up here. It would also be practical to take the hand wheel off and turn it in the lathe to take off maybe an eighth of an inch of material, so I don't, don't really want to do that. But uh, I'm going to fool around with it and we'll see what we get. All right. So I'm going to take this off and we're just going to see what's under here. See what we can do. Flipping this over might just do the trick. Let's see how easy that is and what else would break. So yeah, we could totally flip this over. We could still use the pointer. There are no holes tapped in this side and I don't feel like tapping odd metric holes. Um, I can mill this up a little bit and flip it over. Let's try mounting this on upside down. Clean the crud off of it first. More fun to work on shiny things. Looks like the box is going to be a little too high. It feels like it's bumping into the bottom of the uh, vice. Cleared the hand wheel. Well, we got another three quarters of an inch out of it, at least. That might be the maximum travel. That could be it. Anyway, we got our three quarters of an inch back. Let's see if the top of this box fights with our vice. Hang on. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to crash a tool into my vice. Okay, now let's drive this thing and see what we get. There's a fairly serious problem here. <laughs> this pin will not contact this plunger. <sighs> hmm. We have a quarter of an inch gap right there. Let's lower it a little bit. I, it would be really great if I could fix this problem with just adjustments to the machine as it is. Oh, haha. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> no, we're already at our max. The channel cut in this bracket will not allow us to go any lower. We still need to deal with this thingy. Not exactly sure the best way to do that. I guess we'll just mill it up to size. So I'm going to take this little pointer thing off and flip it over. I think we have a good solution here. Two things I'm going to do. I'm going to take the bracket, this guy, and I'm going to cut this top part out so that the screw goes just a little bit higher. It's not a great solution, but this part is just a switch. All it has to do is not fall off the machine. So take this pointer off, figure out how far we need to machine it. Since we flipped this piece over, these threads used to be over here on the opposite corner. I don't know if you can see that. As usual, I was not thinking. This usually goes up here on the opposite corner. Over here. And points nicely to the numbers. It actually goes over top of the ruler though, which is not a super duper design. On this side, I didn't even realize if we just leave it in the same orientation, it should fit in those same screw holes. And this way, it goes right to the bottom of the number. It's almost better this way. 
and we don't have to make any milling modifications. Next part, to go just a little bit lower so that it hits these, so that these contact each other nicely, and clears the wheel and clears the vise, we're going to cut off the very top part of this bracket so the screw will go all the way up to the top. And I'm just going to cut it with a hacksaw, because I'm lazy. Okay, the bracket is open. Need a file. Good enough for me. It's now open. So we should be able to bring it down, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter. Let's go see what we get. Okay. You can see we have our modified brackets. Let's see what we can do. Let me just hand position it a little bit higher than the wheel. That should give us plenty of room. Still nice and tight on there. No interference from the hand wheels until we bottom out now at the actual end of the axis. All right. Problem one solved. Problem two is manifesting itself right now, which is this little screw back here. This guy. This is a problem. Because it's still hitting the bottom of this axis. Also, since I cut it short, it is not currently locking, which is its only function. So, I'm going to have to put it in the lathe and effectively make this part a little bit longer so that it actually engages, and make this head part a little bit shorter so that it fits under. So I've taken this screw and uh, I put it precariously in the lathe by the knurled head in some aluminum shims. Got it centered up reasonably well. It's a hand screw so it doesn't actually matter. And now I'm cleaning up the threads with this little tap, 5mm.8 millimeters per thread. The main reason that we're doing this, of course, is to make sure that it fits under the y-axis. So, very good. Goes all the way down, locks it. Moment of truth. Ooh, look at that. Goes right underneath perfectly. Okay. Problem solved. Surely I was not the only one who was having this issue.